Hello, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. I didn't know where I was, Dan. <laughs> One minute I was all exotic. This minute you're all confused. Yeah. It's a nice mixture of modes and scales. King of Tone, man. It always it always brings something out of me. It's, it was it's just that was yeah my ordinary run of the mill King of Tone that I've had since. I want to say 2007. Um, yeah, just wow. There it is. There it is. It's interesting you say that. Um, you know, a couple of bars in to what you were playing there, I was like, yeah, that's Dan. There he is. Right. I can hear the, the top end of the telly ringing out nicely. There you go. Everything there, everything really alive. Yes. Yeah which before we say too much more about, today's show is something we've been asked for quite a lot. King of Tone or two Prince of Tones. Why, Dan? Because the King of Tone is ostensibly two separate circuits in the same box. They're the same circuit that you can switch to be either a boost, an overdrive or a distortion, but they're in the same box. The Prince of Tone is Basically, that circuit, but just one of them. So if you put two of them together, theoretically, you should have the KOT. King of Tone. Yeah. yeah. I want to say hi to Matt Lloyd. Matt, if you're watching this, we hope you are. Matt asked us this question many, many times, and we said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. And it's probably taken us two years <laughs> to get there. Um, I've had one Prince of Tone for ages, and mm. then, I don't know, so maybe it was Matt asking the question again on a VCQ. I thought, yes, went on to reverb, and there was one used in America for sensible money. Right. So happy days. Um, as you will, as you may or may not know, the King of Tone waitlist is frankly bonkers. It's, I don't know, over two years. Yeah. So Mick and I have been out to see Mike and Logman, and we've seen the care and attention, the detail that goes into creating these, and it is staggering. Uh, you know, everything's done by hand and, you know. Yeah, component selection and all, all of that. All that stuff. And I think there's plenty of cynics out there who say, well, come on, it's just parts. Anyone can make it. Go on then. Yeah. And, um, yeah, lots of great overdrive pedals out there, but the wait list for the KOT for good, bad, worse or otherwise is Indeed. very long. Yeah, yeah. Um, therefore, they are essentially unobtainable. Yeah. So. so exactly. The, so Mike created the Prince of Tone trying to get a more available, affordable, single side of the King of Tone. Which is not made in Bethel, Connecticut. No. It's made in Japan somewhere. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. Why have we got so many? Well, two Prince of Tones ought to be self-explanatory. Two KOTs, because another question we get asked all the time is, should I get the high gain or the normal version? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the one in the middle of the board is Dan's original print, uh, King of Tone, and that is just completely bog standard as it is. Mm -hmm. When I got mine, I opted for the high gain on the red side. Um, and we'll listen to the difference between that. Cool. They're not that much different. We will finish off with, okay, so you don't want to wait for a King of Tone. You're finding a Prince of Tone hard to find. What would Dan and I choose to get around that problem? Yeah. Nice. We're, here we are saying what sounds exactly like the, the King of Tone. Do two Kings of Tone sound the same? Yeah. We're right. about to find out. Mine's the high gain one. Um, Analog Man, I think he's, what does he say? About 20% more gain at its highest right. gain point. Yeah, yeah. But it's really not that different. Um, so the, the knobs are set the same, more or less. Yeah. Um, internally, we'll get onto this as well. There are a bunch of options internally, and we've set all those identically as it... As they are now, it's set factory standard, which means red side is overdrive, yellow side is boost. Yes. And it, uh, But Dan likes to add some presence boost, treble boost from the internal pot. So that's been done as well. Did you not turn that back or is that... Well, well, I, I left it, it where you like oh, it. Oh, thank you, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Because it was, it was sounding so good and I thought, oh, have I, have I had like stuff something up inside because I thought you'd turn it back. I thought, man, it's um, amazing. No, that's brilliant. Okay, I'm really as, glad. As standard, it comes zero. Okay. Quite anyway, right. Ganyu then, Dan, let's hear the difference between these two pedals. Okay. 
Now, just to say, it, we have both sides engaged. We've got the overdrive side going into the boost side. So maybe for this part, we hear just the overdrive by itself. Okay, and then turn the boost on. Yep. There we go. <laughs> acoustic guitar going. Not a million miles in it, is there? No, no, very close. Um, I mean, I don't know whether it's a frequency thing. There were some of those examples where I thought yours was actually overdriving more. I think, I, I think there's a little bit more top end in mine. So yeah. we're hearing those, the sizzle in yeah. the overdrive a bit more perhaps. Yeah. Um, and I, yours sounds a bit thicker Yeah. to me, but boy, oh boy, it's, I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot in it. Not a huge amount, yeah. And I'm sure, remember that just because the knobs are pointing in the same place doesn't necessarily mean the controls are set exactly the same or they're doing the same thing internally. So it's a visual guide, really. So we'll, we'll give that a little bit more tone then on that side. I'll just try the humbuckers a sec. Yeah, just yeah, a totally. very quick um, comparison. hear that extra gain there yeah clearly we've got a lot of pedals to get through so we could keep doing that forever yeah what's interesting about the kot immediately is this sounds like a les paul that sounds like a telly yeah yes totally and even though there is a little bit of a mid push in it, it the thing that it is loved for is retaining that guitar yeah so there's a really interesting story about the uh how it started on the analog man website it has to do with jim weeder uh guitar player from the band unreal Telecaster player. Um, but interestingly enough, it all started with a Tube Screamer. When <laughs> that's not, uh, it, it was like Jim's had his, his favorite Tube Screamer and the circuit's not based on a Tube Screamer at all, it's based on the Blues Breaker circuit. It's heavily, heavily modified. But they started with the Blues Breaker circuit and then they got to this. So yeah. But inspired by Tube Screamer. It, well, it was like, Jim came to Mike and says, this, this is my favourite tube screamer. Can we work out what's going on here? <laughs> Can you add uh, less compression, um, more bass and treble? <laughs> because I've got this motorbike. What I need is something with four wheels and a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I need a motorbike with four wheels and a roof. <laughs> um, I think we're going to say goodbye to Les Paul in a minute, by the way, because it's just the strings need changing and the tuning is driving me nuts. Um, Okay, well, let's start then. Should we start with the uh, red side? Yes. Um, set to overdrive mode? Yes. 
and dial up one of the Prince of Tones. Okay, here we go. <laughs> So the KOT sounds softer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Because all um, in terms of the internal dip switches on the POT, they're set to completely standard. Um, it definitely sounds softer though, doesn't it? Definitely. Uh, so in, let's get some more softness out of the POT then. I guess vo volume down a touch and gain up a bit. Okay. <laughs> POT sounds better. <laughs> it's just got more edge to it. Right. I think you, you play, see what you think. Now I'm hearing, sorry, I'm hearing the guitar more. In the POT? In, in, the, in the King of Time. There's more, th is, uh, are you hearing a thicker mid-range in the thick, Prince of Time? Absolutely. Okay. So interestingly enough, when I, I went through this with uh, Stephen Wilson, when we were trying, we had that on his board as a booster. And that thick mid-range was something we just couldn't, couldn't get on any other pedal that we tried. So we think the POT has a unique... Thickness in the mid range. Okay, just yeah. for for um for completeness sake, the two internal trimmers on the POT. Um. Uh, do low mid lift switch. The tone from your lower strings will be enhanced a bit, and turbo, which gives you deeper compression, in, especially in distortion mode. Okay. Not massively interested in either of those things. No, but um, the, and they're both off at the moment. They're both so off. What wow. The okay. point I'm trying to make is we're not. We haven't got something selected. Yeah, yeah, sure. That shouldn't be. It's completely a standard. Okay. All right. Um, That's interesting. So you like the Prince of Tone. I like the King of Tone better. Um, yeah. Well, let's. Um, I mean, there's so many directions we could go in. Yeah, yeah. At this point, let me just let, keep going a sec. Okay. I just tried turning the tone knob up to see if that might have a, you know, add more top and take away some of the mid. Yeah. Doesn't really seem to, it just no. adds more top. Um, all right, um, let's see then if this other one <laughs> sounds any different. So uh, we'll set them exactly the same. Does that look the same to you, Dan? Uh Yeah. 
That's hilarious. <laughs> Does that, does that one sound thinner to you? It sounds closer to the King of Time. Yeah. There you go. Uh, let's just double check. <laughs> double check that that dip switch is, isn't selected. Yeah, off, off on that one. And the treble pot's in the same place. Off, off on that one. Might have a hair more treble, but you know. interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. So, okay. Next, then, let's listen to the clean side in the KOT. Dad, you, am I right in saying you never use the clean side on its own? You always use the thing stacked? I always use a stacked. Okay. Always. Um, so, then let us. That would be the boost, wouldn't it? That would be the boost. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um, here it is then. Opposite. Yeah, now it sounds thinner. Now it sounds that sounds thinner than the Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, try this one. I'm gonna turn the turn the um It, a couple of things to say at this point. If you're not detecting a great deal of inspiration in the kind of, um, you know, what we're playing or anything like that, it's because it is a bit of a laborious task. Well, we try, it? yeah, try to keep it to the same so you can actually hear and hear the, the thing. Okay, well, in which case, there's only one thing left to do. Um, we decided this one sounded. Thicker than that one, didn't yep, we? Yep. But they've got to be in this order. They do. Because this is going to be the red side, given that it's set to overdrive. And this is going to be the clean side, given that it's set to boost. Yep. So um let me just let me just um set this one up so that they both come on. Dad's just done a little um Jimmy flip on um G3 there, so that when I press POT2, two POTs are gonna come on. Can you? Nothing like it. I'll play for a bit. I was trying to tweak the knobs there so that um, it, we got closer to it. Right. Because when we first turned it on, it was too thick. There was too much overdrive. It was yeah. too over pushed in the mid range. Um, you you ever play? Yeah. I, what I'm going to do, I might just do each side individually for a second and see how close I can get it. Go for your life, mate. I'm going to turn some reverb on because it's killing me. Okay. No reverb. 
No happy. <laughs> no reverb, no happy. If only there was a t-shirt that said that. Right? Look how far down with the gain I had to go. Check out the knobs, man. Yeah. And how much to get the clarity that the King of Tone has. Yeah. I had to really dial into the treble. But with that came all those mids. Yeah. It's a really, really cool sound. It is. It really is. Yep. Um, um, but some, even, some even set up like that is a lot of gain. Whereas the King of Tone, I've got. You know, I've still got a lot of gain to go, but I don't know. There's still clarity there. It's still quite low gain. You yeah. know what I mean? Set like that. Uh, and I think because the thing that gets me is that clarity. Out of interest, just set the um, POT1 to the to boost as well. So okay. it's not set to OD. And see where that, where that puts us in the mid-range world. Okay. That is really interesting. It almost seemed like more mid-range. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, yeah, it's 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 that there's that thickness of that mid-range that is sort of inherent in that circuit. But again, that 
that boost circuit, that mid-range is something that we couldn't really find in anything else. And as a booster, it works beautifully. But there's, I don't know, there's just there's more clarity. There's more, um, you know, look how far we've got the, the drive down. The gains off, yeah. Yep, basically. Out of interest, go on and stick the gains up. Put Set set the, the two POTs as all pedals should be set down. And let's see where that leaves us. <laughs> Might get loud. Okay. Yep. Yeah. to me that that is those two pedals, can you? That is bizarre. And are you sure they're on the boost? Yeah. Boost. Flick us down a distortion then. <laughs> I tell, hang on, there we go. Very cool. Right. I think we've answered the question then. Yep. <laughs> King of Tone or Prince of Tone. The, the answer to that question, I know what you're going to say, Dan. Yep. If you want that sort of clarity, high headroom thing that you love about the King of Tone. That's it. Your choice is? King of Tone, baby. King of Tone. Okay. I don't like that. Right. About the King of Tone, which is why I don't really use my King of Tone. Okay. I prefer that. I prefer the two POTs. Right. Because you get that chewy mid-range. Right. You get more gain. Feels like it's louder. Even though the it's the, it's much louder. The KOT will go loud. It gets <laughs> tapers of volume pots. Uh some things, you know, kind of go up to about four and then they don't really get any louder. Yeah. The KOT just keeps getting louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And up around sort of, you know, there, there, it's Brilliant. it has an insane amount of headroom. So yep. I'm not saying the KOT isn't loud. I'm saying the POT is loud in the position where all pedals should be set, which is perfect. <laughs> Everything at two o'clock. I actually, I yeah, I, I, two things I prefer about the two POTs is the instant access to the yeah, those switches, mode switches yeah, up yeah. top. That's cool. And secondly, the chewy, thick mid range, which is the sound that I prefer. Sure. Um, whereas I know you like that kind of clearer, higher headroom. Yeah. Where the, where the trebles are allowed to really do their thing. Yeah, I think especially because I 
there's always ambience on for me with something with that sound. So that that sort of clarity yeah. without changing the fundamental frequencies of the guitar. Yeah. You know, it, it's worked so beautifully for me. It has for a long time. Um, but as, if for an overdrive for with a thick mid range, it, the, the Prince of Town is pretty extraordinary. It's great. It's just a brilliant overdrive. Isn't yeah, it? no doubt. Absolutely. About it. Yeah. Sorry if there's now a waiting list for Prince of Tones, but um, come on, there's plenty of good overdrives out there, people. To wit, to woo. The next question then is, okay, so you can't find a king of tone. We have done shows in the long, dim and distant past mm. about dual overdrive pedals. You know, their similarity and differences to the KOT, and maybe that show is due for an update because of the KOTs you know impossible to get status yeah so dan yes what would you choose yes <laughs> if you can't have a kot uh in the absence of doing like a full-on full-blown comparison of every overdrive pedal on the market mm. we just said make a quick decision walk it walk around that pedal shed find two things that you think might approximate a nice kot sound and you've chosen. Okay, so I've chosen the six by Tacalis. Um, first saw this at NAM like a few years ago. NAM! NAM! And was super impressed with it. Remember NAM? Do you remember that? Used to get on a thing, big metal thing. Big metal tube with some <laughs> metal thing sticking out the side. No, I don't believe it. Space time continuum. Then you end up somewhere sunny. Get out and you see everyone you know. Yep. It was a bizarre old thing. It really was. I felt much better about flying when someone told me it's not wings, it's wing. Oh, very good. And I don't know if that's true or not, because it, it seems to me that they're bolted on the sides. You, but everyone sits in the middle. Maybe they sit... No, I, no, I think it... Ah, uh, uh, who knows? Yeah. Anyway. Because you're always worried that one will fall off, aren't you? I am. I wasn't. I think there's a lot of wind. God. <laughs> Physicists out there literally throwing <laughs> cabbages at the screen. <laughs> Engineers. <laughs> Ignoramus. So, um, yes, the six basically has loads of different blues breaker style circuits in it. Yeah. That you can switch between. Um, so if you let me just turn on one that I'd like. If you can have a um shrunk eyes for me for a second. Well, how about you play and I'll find one you like? Okay. All right. We should be. What does the switch do? The switch turns it from 18 volts, from 9 volts to 18 volts. So we'll stay on 18 then, shall we? Yes, leave it at 18. That's great. Let me turn the gain just down a little bit. That's really great. thickness in the mids. Do you want me to listen to a couple of these other blues breaker circuits? Yeah, just switch it back one to the left. Go on then.
interesting. I've gone into the least gainy one. Right. And cranked the gain a bit. Because yep. if you go to the next gainy one up, listen. Really compressed. More compressed. I don't know if either of these, let me just check what these do. And they seem to get gainier the more you go around. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, do you prefer this second one with less gain and more headroom? So you prefer the less gain one with more... Yeah, try this one. So it definitely has those extra mids. And the KOT is now compressing a little bit more. Than the yeah, yeah. I think one of the things with the KOT, when you put that boost side in, because it sounds quite scoopy at the moment, yep. and we put the boost side in, it, it evens all that out. What's in, I, I actually think the 6 is sounding more like a POT at this point. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, we won't bother with that. Right, happy with that then? Happy with As that. As a start point? Yep. So we turn um, that off then, yep. and we turn that on. Yep. And so this is the Bad Bob Boost from Analog Man. I've always loved this. It's so... Um, bad it's, and bobby. Bad and bobby. Very, very bad and very bobby. <laughs> but it, it cleans up beautifully. You know, it just has that beautiful relationship with the guitar. I would normally have it at the start, but I thought actually, this version has got the two knobs, so you've got control over the gain. Mm. Whereas the single knob bad bob boosts the small one that I've got. It just it's, you it's get volume both. and gain together. As a point of interest, um, my my joint first favorite tube screamer ever. My favorite one is a Keeley eight hundred eight mod. This is definitely up there with that. Yeah. It's a Maxon Analog Man mod, and it has the bad bob on this extra switch here, and that's the bad bob single knob that Dan was just talking about. Um, and in, as he was just saying, he was saying, you know, normally he'd run it before as a sort of pre-boost. In this pedal, it comes after the Tube Screamer as well. Right. So it just gives you that lovely boost. Yeah, after. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we start with the gain down, was on the right hand side, and then we just turn up till we get a little bit of sizzle. Okay, so what, what do you think of that? I mean, it's, it's, um, it's it hard. doesn't have I'm the same. It doesn't have the same mid range. Yeah, and I think what happens in the King of Tone, it doesn't. Ha it doesn't. The King of Tone doesn't have the sizzle, and with the boost after that, it it uh, tames some of that sizzly top end. You lose the, the headroom. Ex yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, and it's, yeah. So it tames that. It adds a bit of thickness to it, and that's. I mean, for me, that's. Heaven. Out of interest, what happens if you drop the gain in the bad bob and push the uh, push the um, volume? Yeah. Does that make that. any difference? So remember where we are now. Yeah. 
overdrive in a different part of the circuit. Exactly. There's no op amp in there, is it? It's a transistor design. Um, yeah, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So, so the prediction? Uh, I th okay, prediction. I predict... Oh, it's really tricky. I think the King of Tone... It's my benchmark, right? So with them set up like that, I think the King of Tone is just going to... It won't compress as much as those two circuits together. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to hear a ton more mid-range and a ton more gain. Right, okay. In, in the two separate pedals. Okay. So here is King of Tone. <laughs> It's a pretty glorious sound. It's a pretty glorious sound. I just, I'm going to turn the treble up in the six, and it the bad bob should clip a bit of that treble. So. I tell you what's interesting. Everything you love about the King of Tone is what I like about the other two pedals. <laughs> a, bit, a bit like with the two Prince of Tones. I right. like that thicker mid-range. I like the um, extra gain. But I think the trade-off, we know what the trade-off is, don't we? Once you get into band mix, okay. then everything is too thick, it's too middly, it's too overdriven. Yep. And you're like, where has my tone gone? And if you imagine, right, we're doing a gig, and if I've got that King of Tone, and you're taking a solo over that, yeah. as opposed to with the other two, and you're soloing yeah, yeah, over that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just stepping on your toes too much. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. I I love you know, like most of the time, ninety nine percent of the stuff is is rhythm, and I I think in the band mix that sound just works so well so clear isn't it it's so clear but uh, it doesn't get in the way of anything because a lot of a lot of the stuff I'm in danger of repeating myself here but a lot of the stuff that makes a great overdrive pedal seem so appealing mm. is thick mid range loads of gain yeah which are the two things that cause you all the problems when it comes to yeah. audibility and yep. and mix all right okay okay we we clearly we could keep tweaking I may as well stick on the 335 given that that's where we came in. Indeed. Um, sorry about the. For those of you who love Les Pauls, I apologise that the uh, gold top got binned. It's just wouldn't stay in tune. Which is my fault, not its. Some days you just have days like that. Absolutely. And it makes me angrier than the Hulk. <laughs> so I've chosen... I've gone the other route. I've gone, okay, two sort of almost random overdrive pedals that I don't really know anything about. Okay. Deliberately, however, that I know that are in a ballpark of such. Right. So um, the Olympus is a Mythos, from Mythos's like hand-built best of everything range. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I don't really understand much more than that. According to Zach, it's based on an old pedal called a Gainster Hoochie Mama. Oh circuit. yeah, I have one of those. Gainster slash Hoochie Mama, so it sounds like two things. Yeah. Um, for the initial, the, the original circuit is known by many as a clon killer. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Um, Spartan series is what I was looking for. I had a Hoochie Mama. I bought it from uh, at Guitar Experience. I bought it from... Um... Oh, okay. Who was it made by, do you know? 
No idea. Okay. Well, we'll... I just I got a I, I got a call from um, Charlie Chandler. He says, "Dad, you got to come and try this out." My dad's <laughs> like, "Yeah, it's amazing." And I think I sold it to Paul Stacey. Right. Or I swapped it for something. But it's really great. That I, I remember they used like, you know, way over spec components, like like amp size capacitors and stuff. It was you know ridiculous, but it sounds it did sound wonderful. Yeah, I like I kind of like the description of it, given that it was um, had a slightly pushed mid range, uh -huh. but still plenty of high end and headroom, and those are the two things that really characterise the KOT gain side for me. Right. So, without going over too much old ground. You know, a tube screamer is too compressed and doesn't have the high end, and mm. it rolls off too much bass. Mm. A clom, uh, too, it has too much of a noticeable EQ curve, especially in those upper mids there, which it makes it wonderful as a solo as boost. A solo yeah. boost. So that's that's number one. I thought we'd give that a go. I did plug it in for like one minute just to see that it wasn't doing the wrong thing. Um, the animal might seem like an odd choice as the clean side, given that it is essentially um, inspired by a 68 Plexi. I like it. <laughs> but I figure about a 68 Plexi, there's some lovely clean tones oh, in there, there as really well. Yeah. J-Rocket overdrives I always like. I, no matter what it is, I can always play it and always like it. Yeah. And I've, I figure that maybe it's going to work. So this sort of comes from the viewpoint of, well, you've got two overdrives kicking around. How can you set them up? Can can we get sure. can we get close? Let's have a listen to the Olympus then. Regardless of anything else, it's it sounds it's, unreal. It's pretty killer. <laughs> wow. Um, so let's see about the red side of the KOT then. It's just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Pretty happy with that. Very good. It's not a million miles off. No. I mean, again, the thicker mid-range thing. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds, I mean, wow, it sounds amazing. Yeah, this is the harder job, I think. Um, so here is the clean boost side, the yellow side of the KOT. <laughs> Thank you. 
Again, thicker mid-range. All of this is characterized by a thicker mid-range. Mm -hmm. I've just realized something. This is maybe why I never got on with Tube Screamers. <laughs> It sounds great. KOT sounds great. <laughs> it sounds unreal. <laughs> and that's from someone who, I don't, like I said, I, I don't use it often. It's not, it doesn't fill me up in the way other overdrive pedals do, but that does. I just think the way those two stages work together. The, the, how it retains the clarity is yeah. the interesting thing. Oh yeah. God, Dan, I was hoping we'd achieve something else in this video. <laughs> I was hoping we were going to go. The, yeah, the, you don't need to do you waiting this few times. Just... Mike's waiting list was going to come down a bit, and, and uh, Mike had sent us a, an email going, "Yeah, thanks a lot, guys." Um, but it it does something unique. It's extraordinary. It really does. Okay, there's probably fifty other overdrives we could put on there. Of course. What else could we have done? Put on a really nice blues breaker clone. Yeah. And a clean boost. You know, there's a million ways you could, um, totally. with due deference to all felines, skin this cat. Yes. But that, if we've defined anything about the King of Tone today, mm -hmm. I think it's that clarity, isn't it? Totally. Totally. The way that you hear the guitars, no matter what you're playing, it just, it works so well with anything on the other side of it, anything going into it, like treble boosters into it, you know, it re just reacts so beautifully. Uh, you know, I brought this out. Simon's had a play with this, and I was playing it the other day going, someone's been having a fiddle with this, it feels great. But just so that you can hear, you know, we heard the Telecaster through my side. If I just um, have Schwang with this for a second. I will play the animal before we finish. I appreciate we didn't get to hear the animal, but. So to me, it's like you're still hearing the jag. You're hearing what the jag does, as opposed to it stamping so much of its personality onto a sound, which unfortunately a lot of drives do. Um, so that's that's why I love it. I, you know, 
You hear the guitar. You hear the guitar. And when, when I was doing spirits gigs, you know, Dave and I would take a, a silly number of guitars to gigs for specific songs. It was always, you just, you heard it. I just, so good. It works. Okay, got, well, you know what? A, I've got to put it back on the board now. Here is a pretty uh, unique sounding guitar. Yeah. Let's see if it's in tune. <laughs> Amazing what a bit of pencil graphite and a uh, bit of love to the guitar on a setup front does, isn't it? Let's see um, how this particular thing. It's the first showing on TPS, I believe, for this guitar with the new pickups. Yes, yes, so, indeed. Um, Jazz cat. <laughs> I don't know what those notes were. Yeah, you can still hear this. You that. can totally hear it. Much more of this guitar on TPS in the future. One final thing, I did say. Um, you want to hear the animal? Yeah, we just didn't. We didn't hear the animal on its own. I don't believe it's ever been on TPS before. So just honestly, very quickly, and apologies for the dive version again. But um, yeah, okay. to set it how it should be set. That sounds awesome. Um, blissfully less gain than I thought it would have. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah, I think um, they do overdrive quite a lot of the late 60s plexi, but never as much as an EVH5150, which is what you'd think with a lot of plexi style pedals out there. Killer, as always, from J Rocket. Um, sorry for the gloss over, but it was good to hear it. Okay. Um, I think we're going to be hearing more of the Olympus. Uh -huh. Very nice. Very, very nice. Really like that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's just we, lovely to hear the King of Tone again. To answer that question about the Prince of Tones. Um, yeah. Some really, really lovely, inspiring sounds. And that's sort of, you know, my world. I love that that space, where, where that sits, where how that's voiced. Um, it presents a problem, doesn't it, to um, those of you out there who, uh, you know, 
don't have the luck that Dan and I have, A, with having collected hundreds mm. of overdrive pedals over the year and yep. B, getting sent all the overdrive pedals. You know, that, that happens now. So we're, we're in a position to be able to shoot stuff out and play it and really get into the idiosyncrasies. And I think once you have got two King of Tones and two Prince of Tones on the board and you're putting a fag paper between them, well, A, you've disappeared up your own butt, but B, it's not a fag paper, is it? No. It's a flipping pack of 60 like you used to be able to buy in Australia. Remember those? It, 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 you've gone to France. You've gone duty free. Yeah. You've, you've, you've cartons. Yeah. And you've brought your family with you to carry them all back. <laughs> there, there's a lot of difference there. So if there's a lot of difference between these ostensibly, well, no, the same overdrive pedals. Yeah. <laughs> what about all the ones that are different? <laughs> That doesn't exactly, really help, does it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I also, I know, I know this is running long, but that that whole thing is, oh, it's just a, it's just a, blues breaker circuit. Yeah. You know what? Just another tube screamer. Man. No. No. Totally. Okay. Oh, I loved that. That was so. I've got the, I've got the tingly good vibes. So that. yeah. So you've got King KOT's going back on the board then, yeah. is it? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It just, it'd been so long. Since you know, because we've played other things that have all been fantastic, yeah. but hearing that, I've just gone, Ah, oh, I'm home again. Yeah. yeah, we didn't even talk about the amps today, but you can see what the amps are they're listed below Supro Black Magic and a Tone King Imperial Mark II, set to an open, kind of clean sound. So, we're really hearing the pedals. Yeah. So, obviously, if you put in an overdriving Marshall, it's going to sound very different. We totally. should have said that up the top, yeah, but, totally. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our dear friends in Brisbane, Australia. Pedal Empire, uh, yeah, and you can buy some of this stuff from those guys. Indeed. But there are also links below in the description. To Sweetwater, yeah, if you click them down, I doubt you'll be able to buy much of this stuff from Sweetwater. Certainly not Analog Man stuff, which you've got to buy direct from him. Um, but if you do buy stuff from uh, Sweetwater, they pay us money. It's as simple as that. Ah! Oh, <laughs> no, ela no elaborate story today. Okay, all right. Uh, actually, the shout out to UA, because that reverb is unreal. Yeah, you'll be seeing more of the UA pedals on the show as we uh, proceed. Yep. A massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for your support. Also, to anyone that has gone to thatpedalshowstore.com, and grabbed t-shirts and strings and hats and mugs and CDs and pedals and all the stuff. Buy it stuff. is all there. It keeps the wolf from the door. Indeed. Uh, brilliant. I think that's everyone. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you on Monday for VCQ. Well, yeah, where well, you can beat us up about the King of Time. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye.